and I'm looking around the room I'm like am I not in the hospital like what's going on what you know so when I finally realized where I was I was like I need to call my doctor hey my name is Alicia welcome back to my channel if you are a return subscriber welcome to my channel if you are a new viewer slash subscriber because you're gonna subscribe uh, my channel features all things hair, makeup, and fashion, and occasional story times. And today's video is going to be a story time. So, um, it's been a minute since I sat here and filmed anything. So, I gotta kind of get back in there, you know. <clears throat> but, so I'm here with the story time on my labor and delivery vlog. Vlog. <laughs> my labor and delivery um, as you can tell by the title, it was 10 hours. It was 10 hours long. And I wrote everything in a notebook. So I wanted to get, like, I had it in my notes and then I just transferred it, just wrote everything. So I went to get anything. So let's get into this vlog. So I started out vlogging, but it didn't go well because, um,. It didn't go well because when I got to the hospital, I was bombarded with all these questions, paperwork I had to sign. And then after I got through signing the paperwork, um, they gave me an enema. So, you know, had to do that. And then um, I was laid in a bed, hooked up to machines. So, I was having contractions and I didn't even know it. And when I was laying down, I told the lady, I was like, my stomach is hard right here. So she felt it and she was like, that's a contraction. And I was like, oh, I've been having these and I had no idea. I thought it was my baby balling up in, <laughs> in the womb. But it was um, a contraction. But uh, they weren't really strong. So I was able to handle the pain. So um, they were going to give me Pitocin because I was being induced. But before they did that, they, I was having contractions like back to back. And um, they still weren't bothering me or anything. And, um, but the baby's heart rate started to drop. So uh, they put me on oxygen. This was like around 7 in the morning. We got there at 6. So I took the two machines to the front seven. So they put me on oxygen to help raise the baby's heart rate. Uh, I sat on there for a little while and then they took me off and um, my doctor was like, she wanted me to get an epidural. Well, they checked me and I was only 34 centimeters. Um, I really didn't want one and I should have said no at the time, but I guess she was thinking that my labor was going to speed up with the Pitocin. So um, I got the epidural, which that wasn't bad either, but um, this is kind of when things start to get crazy. So after having the epidural, I lay back down and they were like, if you start to feel sick or if you start to feel nauseous, then let me know. And I was like, okay. So I'm laying there and I'm feeling a little nauseous, but it wasn't bad. And I was thinking like, maybe I'm just telling myself I'm feeling nauseous because they told me that like I was already in there stressed. But then it starts to feel like I, you know, when you about to throw up and you're like steady swallowing a lot. That's what I was doing. So I was like, you know, I feel nauseous. As soon as I told her that, my blood pressure started to drop. Like it was, it was dropping like, it was dropping bad. So I remember looking at the screen and the top number was 78. I don't know what it got to after that because child, I laid my head back and I felt like I was leaving this earth. <laughs> like I was, I laid my head back and my eyes was closing. And the next thing I, I remember her calling the, um, What's the person that puts the epidural in? Anesthesiologist. I remember her calling him to bring some medicine for me. But um, I think she put the oxygen mask back on my face. And um, my blood pressure started to rise again. Like, I don't know how she got it back up, but she got it back up. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was scary. I was also cold in there. Like, I was freezing cold. So she gave me three blankets and then um, she checked my temperature because they check your temperature constantly and they check your blood pressure constantly. So my temperature was 100 degrees and she was like, sweet, we got to take these blankets off you because, um, you're, you know, your temperature is, is high. So I was like, but I'm cold. And she was like, I know, but um, 
she said it was gonna do something with my temperature like I don't remember but um so they took that she took the blankets away from me and I'm freezing cold I'm just like oh my goodness it's just one thing after another so they finally put me on the well, they finally gave me the Pitocin to see will it speed up my labor and stuff like that but um my baby's heart rate kept dropping so they took me off of it for a while and like y'all every time his heart rate got low i got so scared because you know when you're pregnant their heart rate started not like 150s his heart rate was it was it would get like to the low hundreds like in the beginning it was getting to the low hundreds so um with like that was just consistent like heart rate dropping they switched me to my left side back on my back to my left side they had hooked this thing up on my leg to check um the baby's heartbeat i don't know what they had me on at first but i remember they put this thing on my leg because it left a bruise <laughs> and that's how they were checking his heart rate and y'all the machine would go blank like it was flat line and i was so scared so i'm buzzing and people like um y'all think i'm like did his heart rate stop and so she checked the thing she was like no um it stopped sticking to my leg so they couldn't um check his heart rate so they gave me a new one and the new one worked a lot better y'all because talk about i was oh i was about to lose my mind like that was so scary i was about to lose my mind so they finally got me to eight centimeters but um they was checking me and my baby was still up like he was up in my ribs y'all he did not want to come down he was in there stress he was under a lot of stress that's why his heart rate kept dropping and they trying to push him down and she i had to sign this paper for like the vacuum thing that they had to use it the the nurse told me before i signed the paperwork that she has never had to use it before and i'm like okay you know this is gonna be smooth sailing for me she said she don't have to use it and i was just like so i remember her getting me and trying to they had me pushing um this was around this was around three to four so they were having me push and they were pushing him over like to the middle trying to push him over to the middle so he can come down but he was not having it like he was in my ribs and trying to push with the baby in your ribs you know they have you with your chin to your neck trying to push so with him being in my ribs and me trying to push it was so painful it was painful in my ribs and it was even worse than the contractions y'all my epidural had started to wear off on the right side Cause I was able to feel my toes and stuff and I was telling them like my epidural was wearing off and they were like well you should be able to move and I'm like no I'm I'm having feeling like I can feel it it's not numb so I was still pushing with these contractions with each contraction I was pushing yeah the contractions were not bothering me at all like I was able to take that pain the pain in my ribs I could not take like I was in there crying so um I just gave up like i just started crying because i was like i don't know what to do like his heart rate keep dropping like his heart rate got to the 60s i think i think it was that low and it was just um an overall scary experience like i think i have ptsd behind it i don't want them kids <laughs> so they they like the nurse um his dad and my doctor kept trying to encourage me to push i was like don't give up we see this all the time women want to give up and they don't do it and i was like no no i can't do it i can't do it i can't do it i can't do it like I, that was it like I, I just refused so they turned me back over to my left side and had me stop pushing with each contraction because to see if his heart rate would go back up his heart rate did go back up it was like in the 150s it was really really strong then so they were they had put me back on oxygen too so um after that she was just like you know she's just gonna do a c-section because his heart rate keeps dropping and they was like we gotta get this baby out of here now so they gave me another epidural and um I had to wait until they kicked in and then sent me to the OR so I was actually scared to do a c-section like I was terrified but I was like I want this baby out like this is the only way it's gonna come out because I ain't pushing it out I can't push him out like I was, I, I was scared. Uh, I was in there praying, like I was about to lose it. <laughs> but um, I prayed, and then I felt relief because you know I feel like 
Um, God was showing me that he was with me. Everything's gonna be okay. So when they laid me on the table, y'all, I could see, like, they have the little lights. And it was like a reflection on the light. So I could see, like, my stomach and where they had put the, the stuff in to cut me. And I was like, uh, I can see. And I don't want to see. So can y'all cover, like, put the little, um, whatever it is they put over your face between you and the surgeon and all that stuff like that, doctors, whatever. I was like, can you move this up so I can't see? Because I don't want to see nothing. Because I thought I was going to pass out if I saw them cutting me. <laughs> So he moved it and um everything went fine like people was like you gonna feel a lot of pressure and pulling and stuff like that i didn't feel any of that like god i feel nothing i feel when they pulled him out like i could feel that and um he was born at 501 p.m <laughs> so yeah i was happy to get him out of there <laughs> um so after they stitched me back up and stuff i went to my room and well went back to recovery and before they put me in a room and i can get to see my child until 10 o'clock that night i was already mad and i was thinking like i ain't gonna be able to see him till the next day but i ended up calling to the nursery again i remember asking two doctors two doctors could i see him and i forgot what they told me so um i ended up calling to the nursery around 10 and they brought him to me and i kept him for two hours i kept him for two hours because i was tired like i was so exhausted trying to push I wanted to breastfeed, I couldn't because I was tired, like I was exhausted. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't. So I kept him the next night though. And then it was hard to sleep too. It was hard to sleep too because they were checking me every two hours. Checking my blood pressure, checking my temperature, all these vital signs and stuff like that. Like, but I get this what they gotta do. So I really think that my blood pressure was low during that night. Like it was low and I had a low grade temp. But the next day, um, things were kind of kind of good so the next day too they took out my epi the epidural that was in my back one thing too when i kept feeling pain i was shooting myself with the medicine like consistently because <laughs> i like that the pain afterwards is no joke so they wanted me to walk the next day which they did have you get up and walk and i did that i walked around all day and i was just so so tired so exhausted but i did it for my baby <laughs> um i was also still feeling numb on the left on the right side so i was talking to them about that asking them was that normal they like they didn't know anything they didn't know if it was normal or not mm -hmm. but anyway so august 1st is the day that i was getting ready to go home and I noticed that my legs were swollen, my feet were swollen, my ankles were swollen, and my thighs were swollen. I thought it was from me walking around all day the previous day. Um, they were checking my blood pressure the night, um, Friday night, because I had him on a Thursday. Friday night, they would, you know, they did their routine checks again. And uh, my blood pressure was in the, like, 150s. And I just kept saying, has your blood pressure always been inside? I'm like, no, I've never had any blood pressure issues. I've never had a problem with my blood pressure during pregnancy. Nothing like that. So it didn't alarm them enough, I guess, to alert my doctor that I was having. Like my blood pressure was up that night. With them telling me that I was numb, another nurse t thought that she needed to talk to an anesthesiologist. But she never did. And eventually the numbness wore off. So... I guess that's just normal so I was sent home that Saturday they didn't check my blood pressure and I didn't even have them check it I didn't think to have them check it because I was ready to get the hell up out of the hospital like I was ready to go home I was tired of being in that bed it was just and that food it was just, oh, I was so ready to go <laughs> so I, I posted a snap of my feet and I'm gonna insert the clip here or over here with your line and my friend snapped me and she was like is your blood pressure high and i was like i really don't know honestly she was like well check it when you get home so i checked my blood pressure when i got home and it was high like i'm not you know i don't know how accurate the first reading was because it was a wrist monitor and um i've, I've heard that those can be a little bit off but i will insert the picture anyway of what it said my blood pressure was so that was alarming to me but i was trying to stress out and I just kept checking it and kept checking it and it was it was um, still extremely high. 
So my friend that told me to check it, she was like, I told her what it was, and she was like, sounds like you have postpartum preeclampsia. I was in denial. I was like, I do not want to have that. Like, <laughs> I was in denial. <laughs> so August the third was a Monday. I woke up around 8 a.m. I had my baby. I gave him to my mama, and I went back to sleep. 10 a.m. I woke up again. It was around 10, and y'all, I was confused. I did not know where I was. Like, I woke up, and I'm I'm just looking like I'm laying in the bed, and I'm looking around, like just focusing on because the room door was open so i was looking in the hallway trying to figure out what is this on the wall what is that what what is it like I, it was a calendar and i didn't know what it was and i'm looking around the room i'm like am i not in the hospital like what's going on what you know so when i finally realized where i was i was like i need to call my doctor because that with that confusion my i knew my blood pressure was extremely high so i called the doctor's office and they told me to come in so uh, I started getting ready to go in or whatever. And my grandma has a nurse that came, that came to see her. And um, my mama had her check my blood pressure. My blood pressure was, I didn't write it down, but it was 190 over 100 or something like that. Extremely high, like 190, that's almost stroke level. I was so scared, y'all. I was like, I need to go, I need to go, I need to get here now. <laughs> and I'm sitting here waiting on people. I had these staples in, so I couldn't drive. Um. I'm just, I was underway, I was irritated because I'm waiting on my mama to get ready. They taking their time and I'm like, yeah, I could pass out. That's what I'm thinking. Like I'm dramatic anyway, but like seriously, blood pressure is nothing to play with. So I was scared. I was ready to go. I didn't get there until after one o'clock because my baby had jaundice and they wanted to check his um, Billy Rubin nipples. I guess that's how you say it. So I ended up talking to the nurse about that. I had to take him there before I went to the doctor. And um, I almost went off on her because I had forgot about the appointment. I should have known I was confused. Like, I should not, like, I don't know. It didn't register to me that my blood pressure was high because the day that I was discharged from the hospital, I was confused. Like, whatever the, the nurses were talking to me and I wasn't understanding nothing that they were saying. It, was reg it wasn't registering the right way. And um, that was, that didn't surprise, I mean, it didn't. I was thinking like I still got a pregnancy brain. <laughs> I got home. I had my appointments confused and he's confused. That's how I didn't know Monday he was supposed to go back to the doctor. So I had to take him first before I went to get my blood pressure checked. So she gave me a pill while I was there and she prescribed me a medicine. She's going to put me on two, but she ended up putting me on one. And I had to come back. She also took my staples out because she thought that was why I was high. But my blood pressure didn't go down. So I had to, I went back the next day because um, I had to take him. So I went back the next day, my blood was still high. So she prescribed me another pill that I was supposed to be taking for 30 days. The first pill was for seven days. The pill was for fluid because my legs and thighs and everything were swollen. So um, I've got August. Okay, I had to go get this little monster because he wasn't acting right with my sister. <laughs> so. I have here August the 4th that I had a 100 degree temp because I was still checking my temperature and I had a bad headache. So the next day I went to the ER because my um, blood pressure was, it was still high. It was like the pills weren't working fast enough for me. I had a terrible headache and I was hearing like the popping sounds behind my ear. So that's how I knew it was high. But, um, so they um, gave me a pill that lowered my blood pressure almost instantly. And um, she told me, like, you know, you're too young for this. You need to go see a PCP. And they were talking about referring me to a, a cardiologist and everything like that because we just didn't know why my blood pressure was high. Like, they never told, like, my doctor never told me I had preeclampsia. But um, she she never told me I had preeclampsia, but I kind of already assumed it was because my cousin's a nurse as well. And that's what she told me what it was, preeclampsia. So... They did also did blood work. They did urine work. U urine work. I also had um, a UTI, probably from the catheter that they gave me at the hospital. So I was on antibiotics for I think seven days. I don't remember how long. So that's when I followed up with the PCP the next day. I had a temperature when I went in, y'all. They came in to see me. They was um, in all these kind of suits and stuff like that. I was like, oh my god, I do not have corona. I do not have corona. I kept telling them. <laughs> 
<laughs> that um that I have a, a temp because of the infection like you know but they came in there gloved up strapped up and all this kind of stuff anyway so um also at the ER I got a shot in my hip and then at the doctor and said I end up getting another shot she prescribed me antibiotics so I was taking five pills a day for my yeah for my blood pressure and for the um UTI and she also gave me a yeast pill, so I'm gonna get a uh, yeast infection. Pill. You got something you wanna say too? <laughs> she gave me um, a yeast pill. <laughs> say hi, then. say hi. I was gonna show you at the end, but say hi. Say hey. Hi. <laughs> she gave me a yeast pill, so I wouldn't get a. Um, yeast infection so i went back to my doctor wednesday for um a checkup so they could check my incision and stuff like that and my blood pressure was kind of good so she told me to go to one pill a day like after i had finished um all those other pills i went from one pill a day so i went from taking five pills to i think four then i went from four to three and then three to i think one pill so, um, I just recently went back and like when I got to the doctor, my blood pressure was 140 over 88. The second time they checked it after like 20 minutes, they checked it again and it was 120 over 88. The bottom number is still high. They told me they don't refer, I guess they, they don't refer people to the cardiologist until blood pressure is like 140 over 90 and i was almost there i was almost there so um yeah so she told me to come off the pill i go back in three weeks and we're gonna see what my blood pressure is then she told me she was like before i left she was like um when you get pregnant again and i interrupted her i was like pregnant again she was like yeah you say you don't want another baby now but i know you're gonna have another baby so she was like when you get pregnant you don't want a sibling i don't want another baby either. so she was like when you get pregnant again you need to take aspirin your entire pregnancy and your preeclampsia won't be as bad so yeah that's what i had preeclampsia it was terrible terrible i had a 10 hour labor from seven to five and i just don't want to um i don't want to have another baby so, um, the baby's doing good. He and Sean, this levels are good. Um, I was feeding him every one to two hours, so he would release it out in his bowel movements because um, there was no way I could take him out in the sun. Especially with those um, staples, it was hard to move around. But when they finally took him out, I was good to go. But let me tell y'all, when I first took my first shower at the hospital, it's so disgusting. They don't tell you when you have a C-section that it's just so disgusting like i don't even want to see it but anyways um so after i took my first shower because i was happy i was mad they wouldn't let me take a shower the, the night of i don't know why you can't but anyway the day i went home i took a shower i looked in the mirror and saw those faces and i wanted to pass out i really wanted to pass out because <laughs> it was so many and then they oh god mm. I don't know if I could do it again. I can't have baby. So throughout that time, throughout being stressed and everything like that, I just had to keep reminding myself of Jeremiah 29, 11. Because I was like, God, when I bring me this far, he gave me this verse for a reason. I had people praying for me. My friends were praying for me, family praying for me, everything. Um, I had a lot of support. And I'm just glad it's over with. My baby's a month old now. And um, my C-section healed pretty good. Well, not pretty good. Really, really good. They said it was the best I had ever seen. So. <laughs> yeah, so I'm enjoying mother life. The motherhood life. And I'm going to constantly say I don't want another child because I don't want another child. Mm -mm. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to um, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn on the notifications so you never miss when I upload another video. And let me show y'all. Y'all hear how dramatic he is? He's so, he's so dramatic. I'm a little baby. Little baby. Look at him. He look like his daddy. He don't look like me. He don't open your eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.